In the previous lessons, we primarily focused on the QRS complexes. Now, we're coming to the clinical situations where the P waves play an essential role. Let us first summarize what we already know about P waves. As we know, they're essential to diagnosing sinus rhythm. So, we said that P waves are positive in leads 1 and 2 in sinus rhythm. Let's check. They're positive in lead 1 and also in lead 2 here. Criteria number 2 says that every P wave is followed by a QRS complex. And that's definitely the case here. P wave, QRS, P wave, QRS, P wave, QRS. And criteria number 3 says the distance between each P wave and the following QRS complex is constant. So this distance is indicated by this purple double arrow here, and this purple double arrow is the same here as it is here and here. The distance from P to QRS, as we already know, is measured from the beginning of the P wave until the beginning of the QRS complex. You have learned about the importance of leads 1 and 2 when diagnosing sinus rhythm, but from now on, I want you to look at another third lead when assessing the rhythm. Let me show you which one that is. Here's another ladder diagram showing a patient with sinus rhythm. Depolarization goes from top to bottom, so the atrial vector points into the direction of leads 1 and 2, which is why the P waves are positive in those two leads. However, you can also see that this vector is pointing away from lead AVR. AVR is a very useful lead when you want to assess the presence of sinus rhythm because in sinus rhythm, the P waves are always negative in lead AVR, so a very useful lead. Let's also look at what happens in the ladder diagram. Take a look at the anatomical representation and the ladder diagram. Try to follow both. So the sinus node discharges and then depolarizes the atria, indicated by the blue box and the positive P wave in lead 1 and lead 2. The impulse travels through the AV node and down to the ventricles depolarizing the ventricles, indicated by this QRS complex and the red box. This was a short recap of how P waves should normally look like in a patient with sinus rhythm. Now let's look at a situation when P waves are not normal. Well, first of all, P waves are not normal if they're not positive in leads 1 and 2 or not negative in AVR. And they're also not normal if P waves are completely absent. Let's have a look at situation A for a moment. Look at this example. Here we can see regular QRS complexes with P waves preceding them. However, one thing is really puzzling. The P waves are rather flat in lead 1 and they're negative in leads 2 and 3. Plus, they're positive in lead AVR. And we've already learned that in AVR, P waves always have to be negative in sinus rhythm. So according to our criteria, this can't be sinus rhythm. What we have here is a so-called upper junctional rhythm. It's called junctional rhythm because it originates in the AV junction, or in other words, in the region of the AV node. Let me explain the mechanisms behind the junctional rhythm. Here's how it works. So in this case, the impulse originates in the upper part of the AV node, then travels up into the atria, so the vector points away from leads 2 and 3, and in the direction of lead AVR. And that's why the P wave is positive in that lead, and negative in leads 2 and 3. After that, the impulse travels down into the ventricles, causing a completely normal and narrow QRS complex. Let's check it out again. So the impulse originates here, travels up, causes a positive P in AVR and a negative P in 2 and 3, and then the impulse travels down into the ventricles, causing a completely normal QRS complex. Let's have a closer look in our ladder diagram. The impulse originates in the upper part of the AV node, travels up into the atria, causing a retrograde P wave in lead 2 and a positive P wave in lead AVR, and then travels down into the ventricles, causing a completely normal QRS complex. Now let's check out this case. Where are the P waves here? Try to identify the QRS complexes and then the T waves first. So here's a QRS complex followed by a T wave, another QRS complex, T wave, QRS, T, QRS, T. 
But where are the P waves? Well, to be honest, there are none on this tracing. But you might believe me that they're actually hidden within the QRS complex. This is just another form of a junctional rhythm. Let's have a look at the ladder diagram. Similar to the previous case, the impulse is generated in the AV junction and then travels up to the atria and down to the ventricle simultaneously. Let's check it out. So this is what happens. Since the atria and the ventricles are depolarized simultaneously, the P wave gets hidden within the QRS complex. Let's watch it again. So the impulse is generated in the AV junction and travels up and down simultaneously. And this is a so-called mid-junctional rhythm. Remember that a rhythm that has no distinct P waves but with regular QRS complexes is usually a mid-junctional rhythm. And why is it called mid-junctional rhythm? Well, actually because it's thought that the impulse is generated somewhere in the mid-AV junction. So again, distinct P waves and regular QRS complexes, usually in the setting of a regular heart rate. Let's have a look at another case. Here again, there are regular QRS complexes. We don't see any P waves. So this again should be mid-junctional rhythm, right? Are there no P waves? Let's search for the QRS complexes and the T waves first. Here are the QRS complexes. And where are the T waves? They're here. And then after the T waves, there is this little thing here. What's that? Well, that's called a U wave. You can sometimes observe it in hypokalemia, but then there is another curve that is a little puzzling. And that's this curve here, which we can also see elsewhere throughout the tracing. So this little thing follows the QRS complex in a regular manner. The curve's steepness is in between that of the QRS complex and the T wave. So technically, it would be compatible with a negative P wave. And to tell you the truth, that's what it is. This is a P wave that also comes from the junctional area. To be more precise, it comes from the lower junctional area. So this is called a lower junctional rhythm. Let's look at our ladder diagram again. So the impulse is generated somewhere in the lower junctional area and then gets transmitted into the ventricles before it makes its way up into the atria. So again, it starts in the lower junctional area and then travels down to the ventricles because it's already closer to the ventricles than to the atria. After that, it travels back up into the atria causing a negative P wave in leads two and three and a positive P wave in AVR. So whenever the rhythm is regular and the P waves are negative in leads two and three and come after the QRS complex, you're probably dealing with a lower junctional rhythm. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how Met Mastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About Met Mastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.